I had a chance to speak to some people that have written great books, reached the best-selling status. Today we're talking about how to write and publish a book in six months. So here are the top seven things that I learned on how to write a book and publish a book. Counting down to number one, starting with number seven. Should be mentioned, these tips work best for non-fiction books. Number seven, get inspired by your existing content. Writing a book can happen as a result of just creating content. Zoom conversations, phone conversations, videos that you just record, a podcast that you might record. The fact of the matter is that gone are the days where written form needs to come from writing. Tip number six, record videos that you know can be transcribed into text for the book. Convert your video to text format. So there's a lot of different types of tools that you can use to make this happen. You can use otter.ai and you can even use Dub. Dub has a feature where you can take video and then download it as a pure text file. Whatever ways that you're making content online, you can also turn that into a book. Number five, build a community. It doesn't matter where, maybe it's a newsletter or maybe you just have an extended friend group on Facebook. It all starts a year before you publish your book. You want to start building an audience. You mentioned that you had a column on Forbes and that you had, it sounds like relationships. There's a lot of people that don't have any of those things. Sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How did you get your X number of, of followers? You're responding to people. You're yeah. liking the post. And yeah. ultimately, that turns into relationships. It's right away, agents will tell you, you better build your audience. They want to see that you have numbers. The scary thing about that is, then people say, oh, I just need numbers. So I'm just going to go buy a bunch of fake followers so that I can sell my book. The problem is, you get fake followers later that's going to bite you in the butt when you try to run ads for your book. I spent years building up a following on LinkedIn and on Twitter and on Facebook, building up a mailing list. Every time I spoke, really diligent about getting those email addresses. Tip number four, use interviews to involve multiple people in your book. Get people vested in the book. I did this by interviewing people on Dub's podcast, Connection Loop, and by interviewing dozens of people, all of whom helped me to write this book. I got them vested in the project. That way, when I decide to release it, I get people that'll buy it. I get, I get early supporters, I get early buyers, well, hopefully. Number three, schedule weeks in advance. Number of places where you can schedule it, product hunt, a Facebook event, a LinkedIn event. By getting people ready in advance, you get to remind them a couple of times to buy the book because that's the most important thing, which brings us to the next point. Tip number two, something that I learned, is to pick a niche category. It's just less competition. If your category is too broad, you're competing with so many other books. If you stay niche and you stay targeted, you have a better chance to rank higher in the top charts. And the number one tip that I learned from some great authors is to go all in on the day and the week that you release the book. And the reason why that's important is because that's how you chart. As the goal is to chart. You want to chart on some sort of a list. It might sound like a pipe dream to be a best-selling author or to get a top 10 or top 100 within a subcategory, but it is attainable. It's just about getting the engagement on that first day and that first week of the release of the book. You've done your homework and you have supporters, you have followers, try to get them to buy your book within the first couple of days of releasing it because the more volume you'll have in that short amount of time, the higher the chance to chart. If you're interested in taking a look at the first book that I wrote, it's my first book, would love to get your feedback. Today I'm announcing my first book. It's called Just Dub It. It's on Amazon, so I'd love to get your support if you want to find it, just go to Amazon and type my name, Ruben Dua, or just dub it. And if you want to buy a copy for yourself, that's cool. If you'd like to buy some copies for your friends, that's cool too. But no matter what, I'd appreciate the support. And most of all, I'd appreciate the feedback. Thanks so much for the support. See you guys. I've done six or seven books now, but we also have clients who have been published by Big House Publishing. We've had um, one client, she has 47 books published all through a, a big name publisher. Don't write a book to make money because you're not going to get rich writing a book. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's unless you're a celebrity and can get a big book deal, it's hard to make a lot of money on books. So we always estimate with our clients, you're probably going to make about a dollar a book because if you're selling them on Amazon, Amazon takes 55% or whatever it is from, from there, and then you have all the costs involved in producing your book and marketing your book. 
So you're probably going to net about a dollar a book. You know, go with a big name publisher. They typically are paying you about a dollar a book. So it's just interesting that you don't, you don't write a book to make millions unless you're a celebrity author. Even when you're writing, sharing those things on social media of, you know, I'm sitting down to write this morning and I'm feeling stuck. And we always recommend we send galley copies to people ahead of time, get in places like Goodreads where book clubs are looking for books to review, send them to friends and customers and say, I'd love you to read this book and I'd love you to give me an honest review on Amazon. They can write in review on Amazon, even though they didn't buy the book there. Be careful of giving away rights is one mistake I've seen. And then another one, people wait until their book is out. And that's always something I always say, build an authentic audience of people. It doesn't have to be 10,000. Your book agents will want to see numbers like that. They're going to want to see big numbers on your social media platforms. But the reality is, do you have a group of people who will buy your book? You know, that just takes time. It's not a quick fix thing. If you're in the writing stage, just start, take baby steps, keep promoting, yes. keep talking about it. And don't feel like I have to wait till the book is out in order to talk about the book. Take people on the journey with you. Make it, make people anticipate reading it. Right has been through the process, multiple books, as you can see in the images behind it. I think there are a lot of decision points that you have to make along the way when you write a book. And it does come with a lot of back work, right? It does come with doing a lot of writing before, having a social presence. I spent years building up a following on LinkedIn and on Twitter and on Facebook, getting contacts. And every time I went to a show or a conference, putting those contacts into a database and then that newsletter, keeping those contacts active and engaged. When I was able to go to the publisher and say, look, here's the book, here is how I'm going to promote it. I do think that you have to show that you can promote your work and that you're going to have a network behind you to promote what you're doing. Whether you go self-publishing or whether you go the traditional route, it's got to be based on your strategic objectives. And even once you write the book, you know, you're talking about a year to 18 months printed and, and on the shelf and go through the, the publisher's whole process. You know, when you self-publish that, you, you can usually cut that way, 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 way down. You know, you're talking three or four months. When you self-publish, I also want to understand the economics. When I got the big publisher, I knew that I wasn't going to make any money out of that aspect of it. Up front, I was going to be spending money because I spent approximately forty or $50,000 marketing the book myself. And that was just on me. That was a business decision. I used it to, to book speaking engagements and I used it to book seminars and other things. And so that was part of the plan because we're self-publishing and it doesn't, doesn't really change that equation. You mentioned with a previous book that you didn't really intend to, to make money on the book. Yeah. And I'm coming from the same intention. My intention is to not generate revenue from the book itself. I would be remiss to say that my goal is overall effort be monetized in, in some capacity. When, when you When you can go and you can sell a speaking engagement, but the, the fee is to buy, to buy copies of the book. I think that that was, for me, for a little while, that was actually what I was doing. And it's it, a lot to do. I mean, I I know exactly what you're going through. You're uh -huh. trying to get through it too. But yours is coming out when? It's coming out after this podcast is over. Thanks so much, Rhett. Appreciate the time. Right. To all the subscribers of our channel, thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, you know, consider subscribing for more videos from us. And be sure to comment down below with your favorite tip that we covered today. I'll catch you next time. Farewell. Oh, wait, I have a, I have a mask too. I'm wearing a mask. All right. Bye-bye. Farewell.